she actually said that she, you look like you had taken on death. She said the way that you looked, she was scared. And I remember when I was going down, I was actually just like, you, just like how it looks like in the movies where you see the light and you see the white light and it starts, the distance becomes to get further and further away from you. I started feeling like I was falling into a hole. I felt like I started separating from my body. It was, it was like that. lost a baby if you have lost a baby and you are not in a mental space to listen to a miscarriage story i highly advise you to just go ahead and skip this video and check out some of my other ones this video is a part of my pregnancy vlog series and i wanted to just talk about my miscarriage i had a miscarriage last year so basically i found out that i was pregnant around november of last year and my boyfriend and i were not doing so well I got to a point where i felt that i was no longer being honored i felt that i was no longer having my needs served and that it was just detrimental for my children and me to continue the relationship and to continue living in the same household that being said, I took it upon myself to get my stuff, pack up everything, and to move out while I was about seven or eight weeks pregnant. I decided to move from South Carolina to Texas. I packed up my kids and I got my truck and we moved before I even got an apartment or a house secured before i did anything i just packed up my stuff and we left and mind you i'm pregnant and dealing with a pregnant body it is not good for you to be dealing with stress at all to be handling especially large uh copious amounts of stress things that are really eating at you and obviously the demise of a relationship, a family, uh, when there are children involved, it's it's very stressful, especially for one person to, to handle and deal with. That being said, I took my happy behind on the road and I think it took me, I, I drove the first day for about seven hours. And typically at about hour number three or four, I'm already tired. But because I'm just running on adrenaline and stress on my body, I took me a sip of a five hour energy and I pushed those seven hours from South Carolina. I made, I made it to Louisiana while we were there. I was in a hotel and by the way, I only had about $1,800 in my account at this time to make it work and payday wasn't for another, I think two weeks. You can imagine the stress that I'm dealing with, with two kids on the road, $1,800 that's all i had on a fixed income and so i found us a hotel while i was driving i'm looking for cheap hotels and i found a hotel that's like 60 70 dollars a night that was extremely discounted at the time and it was safe it was nice in a good area so boom i got this hotel while we were in this hotel the first day i was doing school because i was still in school at the time i was still in college finishing my bachelor's program which is complete now and I had two kids with me that I had to feed. And then, like I said, I also had to figure out housing for us in Texas. So I'm making all the arrangements. I'm figuring everything out. And it's like snowing in Louisiana where we were at at the time. Mind you, it's November, December time frame. And it's snowing. We're leaving from South Carolina where it's warm. So we had to buy coats. 
now I'm like digging, digging, digging into this little bit of money that I have. And I'm like, okay, I have to buy coats. My kids can't be out here cold. So I went and I found a Ross, bought coats for me my and my two kids. Again, we're in the hotel. I'm making it work. We're figuring it out. And I get the hotel. I get the apartment set up. And so it's day two or three and it's time to get back on the road so we get on the road we're driving down there so it's just stress upon stress upon stress as you can imagine on a body i make it to texas and before i even get to my destination which was san antonio i had already set up and found the apartment but i needed to call do security deposits make sure all paperwork went through all of that because i handled a lot of it in the hotel but due to i think it was the weekend stuff just was happening and everything was not lined up as perfectly as i needed it to and that's also why we stayed in the hotel for two days because i needed to confirm that where we went to in texas was going to be ready so long story short we get to we're on the road to san antonio and i'm about an hour out i'm calling the apartment now and i'm like hey you know what's going on what do you guys need it's a 700 deposit only got 1800 i think i spent about 75 on our coats gas was already adding up food was already adding up they need 700 for the deposit first month or uh just the deposit 700 so you know here we go boom 700 that's gonna get me keys to an apartment so as much as it ate me up to use that okay here you go we i'm calling and i pull up at the apartment i get out of the car and, and go to the leasing office car is still packed kids are in the car asleep from drive and i'm like hey give me the keys i don't need to do a walkthrough just just give me the keys we've been driving all day give me the keys give me the keys give me the keys 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 gave me the keys and um i went and found the apartment because they didn't show me around at this point i went and found where we were going to be at pulled into the garage, you know, we had to have a garage, pulled into the garage of the apartment and got out. And thank God it was a really nice apartment. My girlfriend, Jada, actually her and I toured the, the apartments when we lived in San Antonio before. So I was familiar with the area already, familiar with that apartment community already. It's not like I was just moving somewhere just in no man's land. However, it had been some years and like I said, my kids and I, we needed something. It was a desperate time. Everything was great when we got in and so boom, kids are hungry. Open up that refrigerator, it's empty. Before we got into the apartment as well, I'm calling a mattress guy, people who sell mattresses, because mind you, I'm, I'm pregnant and I can't sleep on the floor calling a mattress guy. The mattress was 140, the mattress in the box frame. So he delivered it to the house, got it into the apartment for me. So that first night I had packed some sheets in the car. The guy bought the mattress up there. And so there goes the bed and the covers for that first night. And I had my laptop for school. So the kids had a movie on Netflix. Y'all, 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 that's a lot. So the second day, food needed to be acquired, but how can you cook food without pans? I didn't pack any pans. There was no room when I was packing to take pans as much as I needed other essential stuff. The next day, we wake up in the morning, got the kids ready, and okay, y'all, now we gotta go and buy some pans and some food. I think I had about seven to $800. I go to the Goodwill, and I'm buying like a boiling pan, a frying pan, some cups, individual cups, a couple plates and some uh, utensils. And that's it. That's it. I think the kids got cheap toys out of me on this day as well. They just get on my nerve. You know, I had to be very calculated with this little bit of money. I knew that I was going to get paid the following month. But when being a mother and being in these tight situations, you have to be very particular about everything, including where you spend your money. Like I said, coats, food, the mattresses, the mattress for the room that night, uh, the rent up front, you know, sm necessities only. I have to figure it out. We get our stuff from the Goodwill, then it's time to go to the grocery store. And I'm feeling at this point in the grocery store, I'm feeling tired. I'm feeling fatigued. I'm feeling stressed, but I'm pushing. And I literally remember pushing the cart, feeling dizzy, feeling tired, feeling like I'm, I'm, this is, this is not good. 
but I also knew I was under a lot of stress and I wasn't thinking about that baby. I was not thinking. I was in such a mode of, you got to provide for your kids. You got to provide for your kids. You got to provide. You got to make it. So I'm pushing y'all. So I get to the grocery store. I get some necessities, you know, bread, peanut butter, jelly, some sandwich stuff, small stuff to make it some rice, some meat for dinner or whatever, just small stuff until we get paid until I can figure it out. So we make it through, get home. And I remember talking to Aaron's godmother who lives in Texas, who's awesome, uh, uh, an angel from above who you know, I was just telling her that day, like, I'm just so tired and I'm bleeding came home and I was like, I'm bleeding. I don't know why I'm bleeding. Like, what is this? And it was pretty red. It was a good amount of, of blood when I peed. It was a, you know, a good amount. I'm thinking, oh, maybe I'm just tired. Go lay down. So I laid down, laid the kids down. And now it's time for me. I felt like, okay, Johnny's now you can take it easy. Now you can rest. The kids are good. You, you got some stuff around here. You got some food for them. Maybe you can take it easy for a second. It was time for me to calm down. She took Avery for me that night and my baby girl stayed with me. I wake up at six o'clock in the morning and I just had to pee. Wasn't in any pain, six o'clock and I had to pee. And I went to go use the bathroom and baby came out baby came out um baby came out and just plopped in the toilet right in the toilet bowl before the water so he's the baby's just sitting right in the toilet bowl for me to look at him and I got up and I just couldn't when it happened I couldn't even believe it I'm like what what and I looked down and lo and behold there it was so I sat there for a second in disbelief and I just sat on the, uh, cleaned myself up and I just sat on the edge of the bed. My baby was still on the floor mattress pallet setup that we had. And I think I just sat there. And so some hours went by and I think I called my mom and I told her what happened. And then I told Aaron's godmother, they were like, you know, you should definitely go to the hospital. However, a couple maybe an hour or two had progressed since i the baby actually dropped in the toilet bowl and i noticed that i started bleeding like bleeding a lot i'm like oh goodness i need to go to the hospital i get baby girl dressed and of course she starts crying i'm getting her dressed and i'm like erin please baby please i'm bleeding at this point so we get to the car in the garage and I buckle her in. And what she said to me, I have to go pee. And mind y'all, I did not flush the toilet. So there's a baby still sitting in my toilet. I am at this point, because I had been bleeding so much, I picked her up and I walked up my stairs. And I kid you not, I could not, I didn't make it carrying her up the steps all the way. I put her down. And I'm like, Aaron, you have to go. She's crying because it's, it's six, seven o'clock in the morning. She's fussy. She didn't go to the bathroom. I'm like breathing heavy now at this point. And I'm like, Aaron, baby, please. So she's just crying. And if anybody knows Aaron, she's just a diva. She's not doing it. Okay. I had to like muster. Here I go again, mustering up strength to go and get her upstairs to use the bathroom. And I'm just breathing and huffing and puffing all over the place. She uses the bathroom. Y'all, blood is, is dripping down my legs at this point. It's dripping. We get back in the car. We make it downstairs. We make it in the car. And I am bleeding. I call my girlfriend, my good girlfriend. Hey, Jada. And I'm like, Jada, I need you to talk to me. Because at this point, I'm feeling myself getting dizzy. I'm feeling myself like losing it and i'm driving to the hospital and the hospital is like 30 minutes away 
because I'm military, I got to go to special hospital, military approved hospital. The hospital is a little bit away. I'm driving. She's talking to me. I had a, a cucumber water that I bought the other day at the, the grocery store and I had it in my car. And so I'm like drinking that, trying to put something into myself and I'm going and she's like, Joe, just keep talking, keep talking. I'm just talking. I don't even remember what our conversation was about. And I'm driving to the hospital. I'm like, okay, girl, I made it. You know, love you. I talk to you. Get to the hospital. She's still, Aaron's still crying. I'm bleeding. At this point, I've bled so much that there's a puddle in my seat, in the driver's seat. There's a puddle. And my driver's seat is soaked in, in blood. Like, it's that much. Get in, the house, get in the line. And when you go to an ER, there was a line. And so they're just willy-nilly taking people's whatever. And I'm standing there. And I'm like, like shaking i'm just up at this point like oh my gosh oh my i can't i can't like somebody like i can't wait this long i cannot wait this long so i i'm holding Aunt, my baby's hand and i'm like baby come on let's go so we went there was like another desk over in the other side of the room i'm not sure what they were doing didn't care at the point at that point i'm like hey you guys i just drove myself to the hospital i lost the baby i'm bleeding right now like i can't i can't go on any further can y'all please help me they go and get a wheelchair for me and they stick one of those big white pads in it. They stick that in the chair. They put me in it, put Aaron in my lap, wheel me to the back. Boom. When I tell y'all, I get to the back and they start prepping me, get me undressed. And it's just blood everywhere at this point. Like there's blood everywhere on my shoes, on my socks, on my pants, everything, just everywhere. Oh, I'm like, I can't believe I'm bleeding like this. They put one of those uh, big diapers on me and they start checking everything, checking everything. For a second, it slowed down. And I'm like, okay, I must be getting better. I must be getting better. I'm thinking I'm getting better. And they're like, okay, we're going to take you to get an ultrasound to make sure you, it, you, you had a complete miscarriage, that everything's gone, everything's done, whatever. When I was in the ultrasound room, you know, they need you to get out of the bed and get into like the ultrasound table. I'm like, I couldn't even get in there. Like, we can help you. And I'm like, no, don't help me. Like, I can do this. I know I can get my, like, what is, Janice, I'm looking at myself like, girl, what's wrong with you? you? You, girl, get yourself up in this bed. Get up. And I could not. And I, I hated feeling so weak. I hate feeling like, what is wrong with me? They're getting me in the bed. They're getting me out of the bed. I tell them, like, I'm starting to feel dizzy. And they were bringing me back to my room. And I said, I feel dizzy. I'm starting to feel very, very dizzy. And they started running me back to the triage room. I kid you not. As soon as we get in there and they look to change the diaper, y'all, y'all, a whole nother flood came up out of me. So much where the doctor who was uh, down at the bottom of the bed was gathering it like this, gathering gushes of whatever it was gathering gushes of it like it was so much and i'm like i i i don't know what's happening i don't know so they clean me all up they put it put a thing back a new pamper on me Aaron, my daughter she's sitting right right in the chair beside me in a room i'm in the bed she's in the chair i just remember everybody left out it was calm and all i remember is like a gray haze over my eyes it was gray. It started to become gray and I started to feel like this and I could see gray. And I remember looking at Aaron and all I remember doing is grabbing the the long remote that lets you hit the volume on their little TVs. And I grabbed the little hospital remote and I pushed the red button and I kid you not, I passed out. Passed out in the hospital. Passed out. Aaron's godmother, she actually said that she, you look like you had taken on death. She said the way that you looked, she was scared. And I remember when I was going down, I was actually just like, you, just like how it looks like in the movies where you see the light and you see the white light and it starts, the distance becomes to get further and further away from you. I started feeling like I was falling into a hole. I felt like I started separating from my body. It was, it was like that. I pushed the button and all I remember seeing and hearing was somebody rolling Aaron out 
out of in her chair. I remember them rolling my baby out and me just down and they were in there and that was it. That was it. I was gone. They woke me up. I remember getting woke up. Hello? Hello? Are you there? Are you woke? And I'm like waking up. And so I'm trying to give like a thumbs up. I'm not sure if they saw that because they kept on hitting and asking me like, are you there? Are you woke? I'm trying to give a thumbs up. I heard uh, one lady, you scared us for a second, blah, 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 or something like that. And I'm scared at this point because like I can't move, don't have enough energy to say anything. And all, I see a lot of people around me, but I'm not really fully comprehending. So I'm scared at this point. But they were like, you had to get a blood transfusion. Y'all, it was so terrible. It was so terrible. It really was. It was just so terrible. Long story short, I came out of it. God brought me through. It was a lot of blood loss. It was a lot of trauma. It was a lot of just, just stress. A lot of like, you got this, you can be strong, pride. A lot of don't ask nobody for help. You can do it yourself, figure it out. A lot of stuff that really didn't need to be or have to be. If him and I were grown enough at the time, we could have figured something else out so that I didn't have to be pregnant on the road with two kids and having to figure it out. It was just terrible. That that miscarriage was absolutely terrible. After they did the blood transfusion, I went upstairs in the room. They transferred me out of triage and now I'm staying there overnight. And I had chills very bad. It wasn't cold, but just chills. Like um, they, the doctors came in the room just looking at me like, what's what's going on? Like, I don't know what's going on. Y'all tell me. And I had chills really bad. I mean, it was just terrible. And I'm going through all of this alone, alone. I was in the hospital alone, just going through it. It was terrible. They all were like, oh my gosh, you know, you don't have anybody. Nah. And I'm just like, yeah. It was terrible. It was awful. It sucked. I got home. I got my kids. The kids came to the hospital. It was time for me to go home. I got my kids and we drove home. It was two o'clock in the morning when they let me go. They let me go at two o'clock in the morning because kids were not allowed to stay overnight at the hospital. I'm driving home with my babies at two o'clock in the morning. We come home. The kids get in the bed and I go back to that in my toilet. I think I was so numb from everything. I closed the bathroom door, couldn't even deal with it. And I used the, the other bathroom for a while. It just was a pretty bad experience overall. Pretty bad experience overall. One of the worst. And I'm still getting through it. And I, I just want to encourage people who have been through a similar traumatic miscarriage or a story similar is that there is hope don't feel ashamed for what you went through don't feel that you need to mask your feelings there is hope there is there are people who you can talk to there is light at the end of the tunnel do not give up don't lose hope let's get through it together continue to pray surround yourself with people who love you with people who pour into you let not people minimize your experience or your story or your situation because it's an inconvenient truth for them to deal with. No one will ever know the gravity of losing a baby, whether it's at eight weeks or eight months, because it's trauma. It's trauma, it's traumatic, and it sucks. I even remember after I lost the baby, when my kids would say, mom, I would, every time, they mom and I would lose a breath every time over time I, that's gotten better and I've gotten better but it's tough it's tough and even to this day I feel that I'm still suffering from some of those ramifications of losing a child even sometimes feeling like you are upset and or angry or irritated and annoyed with your own because you haven't dealt with that that loss keep your head up there is hope there is light and connect with someone who you feel that you can trust, who you love, who love you unconditionally for, the, for you to be your true and authentic self, for you to feel free and comfortable to tell your story. And it's all good, you guys. <sighs> Let's get through it. This is my pregnancy vlog. Y'all said y'all wanted it.